Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about Juan Manuel Marquez and let's talk about Timothy Bradley. Now, let me just say this right? When you're thinking about eras, you have to think about who the fighters have fought and how they've done. Sometimes an era looks much more dominant when you're looking back in the rearview mirror than it did at the time the era took place, right? Just like Harry Truman here in the United States is now viewed as a much better president than he was viewed during his term, right? Look at his low popularity at the end of his second term, right? Just like his reputation has increased following his reign, so too it is in boxing. There are many fighters, including Bernard Hopkins, who quite frankly, as we look back on his middleweight career, you start to appreciate it more than you did at the time, right? Ultimately, we need to judge guys by who they've beaten, how they've beaten them, when they've beaten them. Now, Timothy Bradley right now is making a very compelling case that this is his era. Right? Understand, he's unbeaten, just like Floyd Mayweather. But, Timothy Bradley took on an unbeaten Devin Alexander, very tough customer, southpaw, and beat him. Timothy Bradley took on Manny Pacquiao. I understand that many people view the scoring as controversial. Just understand that Brian Kenny saw that fight, right? Brian Kenny, who used to be with HBO, uh, excuse me, ESPN, uh, and now is on a pay channel. He saw the fight. He thought Bradley won that fight 8-4. I can tell you here in good faith, I thought Bradley won that fight. I don't know how anyone can look at the last three rounds of Bradley Pacquiao and feel that Manny Pacquiao closed better than Timothy Bradley did, right? Bradley officially beat Manny Pacquiao. Now here he was fighting Juan Manuel Marquez. I know many people didn't see the fight, it's pay-per-view. But let me just tell you, I was watching some foreign feed, not HBO. I watched the first seven rounds of the fight. I got bored because Timothy Bradley was dominating every round, right? My girlfriend, who's into boxing, but not as much as I am, was there with me. She started to get bored. It looked one-sided. In fact, it was interesting because the crowd was watching a different fight. The crowd was cheering every time Marquez came close to hitting Bradley. Not hitting Bradley, came close to hitting Bradley. But what you really saw in those first seven rounds was really a foot speed and footwork exemplar. It was an exhibition, right? Juan Manuel Marquez has a lot of great things going for him. He doesn't have Timothy Bradley's foot speed. He can't move like Timothy Bradley. And Bradley was combining it with upper body movement. So he would come in, hit Marquez, he would back out, and as Marquez tried to throw right hands, Bradley would roll away from the right hand. Right? If Bradley got caught up and Marquez stepping forward and didn't have the space to back up, Bradley would pivot and turn 
It was masterful, right? Watching it live, I did not give Juan Manuel Marquez any rounds other than the third round, right? You know, I watched the first seven rounds. I was wondering whether Bradley would have his balance. Bradley was coming off of a brutal beating at the hands of Ruslan Pavotnikov, right? Bradley, by his own admission, had slurred speech. Bradley, by his own admission, had blue thoughts. Bradley, by his own admission, had gained dozens, plural, dozens of pounds, right? I was really wondering if Bradley was still Tim Bradley. But once you saw Bradley on the balls of his feet, once you saw Bradley moving around the ring, once you saw how slow Marquez looked, by comparison, the hand speed gap was almost as wide as the foot speed gap. And once you saw Bradley able to land a jab and circle Marquez, to me, it seemed like a done deal. Right? There was no way I thought Marquez was going to come back and do anything in this fight short of getting a knockout. Right? My pre fight video for this fight said that I thought the fight wasn't bettable because of questions about Bradley's physical condition. Right? But I conceded that before I heard about Bradley's physical condition, I thought Prime Bradley would beat Prime Marquez and that Bradley just moved too well for Marquez. But even I was surprised at just how much better Bradley moved than Marquez. This was an exhibition. It felt like I was watching Floyd Canelo. Right now, don't get me wrong. Marquez is a better fighter than Canelo. I know that's going to sound controversial to some. Sounds controversial to my cat. But just like Canelo couldn't corner Floyd Mayweather, Marquez couldn't corner Timothy Bradley. Right? The hand speed gap was really striking. Keep in mind, too, the fight could have been even more boring because Marquez had no answers for Timothy Bradley's jab. You know, Bradley, because he's a fighter, kept coming inside throwing punches other than the jab. But had Bradley wanted to be conservative, he could have popped that jab all night long. So I left the fight after the seventh round. I thought, man, you know, I don't like to see legends getting deconstructed like this. Right? I thought, no way Bradley loses a decision. Maybe I'll pick up the paper. Maybe I'll hop on a website after the fight and I'll hear about some miraculous, you know, finish where Marquez got a lucky knockout or something like that. But I knew the score, watching Bradley dominate round after round. So imagine my surprise when I heard the scoring wasn't unanimous. When I heard it was a split decision. In fact, imagine my surprise when I heard that two of these judges had the fight 115-113. Right? One for Marquez, one for Bradley. I didn't see how that was possible. The third judge had Bradley winning by four rounds. So what I did is I actually went back and watched the HBO feed. Right? I thought, gee, you know... Was I missing something? Is there, is there something that I, that I missed here? How did the guys on HBO score it? Right. I was wondering, what exactly did Harold Letterman see? Right. Because he likes to score fights in real time. Unfortunately for this fight, I wasn't on Twitter. I had no idea how the general public scored it. Right. But for me, you know, Timothy Bradley was almost pitching a shutout when I left the fight. So then, of course, I'm looking at the HBO fight. And this time, of course, you know, I'm watching after the seventh round, too. Right? 
And on the HBO telecast, Harold Letterman gives Marquez the first round. First round's a little bit slow. Could go either way. Okay, fair enough. But then, of course, Harold Letterman proceeds to then give the next six rounds to Timothy Bradley. I don't know how anyone could watch the first half of this fight, or in fact the first seven rounds of this fight, and feel that Marquez was even in it. Right? Marquez is getting circled. You know, it's, it's really, you know, a textbook example of how movement can destabilize a fighter. Right? Not only is Bradley moving more, but Bradley's the more active puncher. Right? It's lopsided. So I believe boxing actually avoided a major embarrassment here. Because in my opinion, it would have been an absolute farce in a fight with no 10-8 rounds if Marquez had won the decision, right? Let me just tell you the only rounds, in my opinion, where an argument can be made that Marquez might have won the round, right? The first round, looking at it a second time, okay. But let me say this. I believe if these guys fought in an empty room, that exact round, without the crowd ooing and eyeing every time Marquez threw a punch, I believe objective people would have given that first round to Timothy Bradley. But let's say the first round credibly could have been given to Marquez. The third round. I believe when I watched it live, that's the round I gave Marquez. Right? The third round. The ninth round. Might be Marquez's best round, right? And the 11th round. Let's call it four rounds for Marquez in a 12 round fight. That means the scoring should have been 116, 112, which is what one of the three judges had it, right? I don't see how you get to the point where on the judges' scorecards, and what I'm going to say is a true statement. In seven of the 12 rounds, believe it or not, two of the three judges scored the fight for Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? They're different rounds. Understand that there are rounds where all three judges scored for Timothy Bradley. But just understand that in seven of the 12 rounds, two of the judges scored that round for Juan Manuel Marquez. I'm perplexed. I don't get it. Joel Diaz, Bradley's trainer, tells him late in the fight, I know you're ahead. I'm just not sure how many rounds, right? I believe the feeling in the Bradley corner was that he's ahead by multiple rounds, right? Certainly that was my feeling watching the fight. Harold Letterman, by the way, didn't have it 116-112. He had it 117-111. And that's credible to me, right? Tim Bradley winning the fight by six rounds. Folks, the fight wasn't close, right? The ring generalship, the guy dictating the action, the guy circling the other guy, the guy dodging punches using upper body movement. They're all the same guy. And that guy's Timothy Bradley, right? So let me say this. You know, this shows you a couple of things. Right? It shows you that Manny Pacquiao fought the wrong fights against Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Because when you emphasize movement around the ring, 
Marquez has a problem. After all, he's 40 years old. This also shows you that Timothy Bradley seems to have recovered from the Provodnikov beating. Now let me point out, he said some interesting things before the fight. He said that in the Provodnikov fight, he was dehydrated. Read between the lines. He was overweight, dehydrated his body to make weight. And then, of course, his body didn't adjust. He couldn't recover. He himself concedes that fighters who lose a lot of weight before a fight have a problem with punch resistance, right? Of course, understand Bradley's bigger than he looks. He looks like a little guy. He's 5'6". In this fight, at the time of the fight, Bradley weighed in the 150s, right? Bradley would have, weight-wise, no trouble fighting the guys at 154. Just food for thought, right? And so let me, let me say this. Now, now Bradley is taking his training more seriously, although you wonder how he could be. When you look at the jacket he's wearing on the HBO face-off, and you look at the beard, and you look at the weight, and then you look at how much thinner his face looks when he's being interviewed by Max Kellerman after the fight. In other words, I believe Bradley probably lost at least 20 pounds following the HBO face-off. Right, so Bradley's a guy with a weight problem. But he had his coordination. He doesn't seem, and keep in mind, we won't know for years, but he doesn't seem to have post-concussive syndrome, right? He was coordinated. He was fast. He was moving. The Provodnikov beating didn't seem to carry over into this fight. Right? And let me just say, he was simply too fast. It looked to me like Marquez was trying to load up on a counter right hand. Marquez had very little luck landing his left. Very little. So it seemed he was trying to load up on a counter right hand. But Bradley was just too slick. He'd come and hit him. And then as Marquez would go to throw it, Bradley would move his head over here. So Marquez would have to reach and the leverage for the punch was gone by the time it got there. Many times, it simply missed. So count me among the Harold Letterman people. He had it 117-111. I can't disagree with that scoring. I can tell you, fight night, I watched the first seven rounds. I had it 6-1. Right? 6-1. I can tell you, too. Look at the telecast, the HBO telecast. After the 12th round, and the 12th round looks close. Then in the closing seconds, Bradley lands a bomb on Marquez, and Marquez comes awfully close to hitting the canvas. Let me just point out, too, that understand that's the closest either guy came over the 12 rounds to hitting the canvas. So then Max Kellerman on air says... There is no way a competent judge could give that round to Marquez, right? Understand, if Timothy Bradley won six of the first seven rounds, wins the 12th round, I thought he won the eighth round, I thought he won the 10th round. In other words, he dominates the first half of the fight, he holds his own the second half of the fight, he lands the most meaningful punch in the fight. In my opinion, this is not a 115-113. This is at least a 116-112. Now, I know Nacho Beristain kept telling Marquez during the fight, you're winning the fight. I know Marquez after the fight felt that this was the sixth time in his career that he had been ripped off. I'll say this. A lot of guys get caught up in the moment and they 
think they're winning the fight. I'd be curious to hear what Marquez has to say after he sees an actual film of the fight. Folks, it wasn't close. I hope they replay this fight on regular television, right? It was not close. Timothy Bradley dominated, so much so that when they're reading the scores, <laughs> the first score they read is Marquez, what, 15, what, 13? And you see Bradley with a look on his face and he looks at his corner and it looks genuine and everyone's perplexed around him. Then they read the second judge, 115, 113 for Bradley. Then Bradley starts to go over to the ring because, you know, the ring apron, because he wants to hop up on the apron when they announce him as the winner. I didn't believe that was theatrics. I thought Bradley knew he had won this fight by several rounds. Let me close in saying this. Who should Bradley fight next? If I'm Timothy Bradley, father of four, had slurred speech for a month and balance problems, right? So profound that my trainer was concerned when I started training, right? Let's say I, I've had blue moments, mental health moments involving self-doubt, where I've ballooned up to, you know, 180 something pounds in a matter of weeks. Right. I've I've literally gained over 30 pounds in a matter of weeks. Right. I'm one of the best fighters of my generation. I've beaten Devin Alexander. I've beaten Manny Pacquiao. I've beaten Joel Casamayor. I've beaten prime Kendall Holt, not shot Kendall Holt, but prime Kendall Holt. Right. I've beaten Lamont Peterson. Right? Everyone was excited when Lamont Peterson lost to Lucas Matisse. Well, what about when Lamont Peterson lost to Timothy Bradley? Quite frankly, if I'm Timothy Bradley and Bradley says he wants to fight the best, there's only one guy I would fight. I'd retire from the sport right now and I would just say, Floyd Mayweather, when you're ready, I'm ready. I'd never fight Manny Pacquiao again. Been there, done that, right? Juan Manuel Marquez, all I can say is, at this point, I'm not sure if he's a credible opponent for a rematch, right? Devin Alexander, all I can say is, they fought when both were unbeaten. Been there and done that. I wouldn't fool around by fighting Canelo and names like that. If I'm gonna fool around with a golden boy fighter, or someone who hires Golden Boy to be the promoter for their fights, then if I'm Timothy Bradley, I literally just say, look, Floyd, you're unbeaten. I'm unbeaten. Let's have a 21st century version of Hagler Leonard, right? I believe Timothy Bradley, quite frankly, is going to be remembered much more fondly in history looking back than he is right now. You've heard me talk about crowd dynamics and how crowds often boo when there are robberies. Incredibly, this crowd booed. It was stunning. This crowd booed Timothy Bradley being declared the winner in a fight that Harold Letterman had Bradley winning by six rounds, right? Bradley, to his credit, just waved off the crowd. If I'm Bradley, I wouldn't care what anyone thinks. You're a Hall of Famer today, right? As great as Floyd is, he never stepped in the ring with Devin Alexander. He didn't step in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, right? Those guys are in Bradley's rearview mirror. Both men, in my opinion, dominated Juan Manuel Marquez, by the way. Marquez has seven losses. He claims he's been ripped off six times. The one fight he admits to losing is to Floyd Mayweather. Right now, I know Mayweather has a full dance card. This is prize fighting, and Mayweather needs to think about the bottom line, the prize. Right? That's the goal. So Mayweather should go ahead and fight whoever he wants. He's certainly earned that, right? If he wants to fight Amir Khan next, great. 
But I believe Mayweather understands Timothy Bradley, an unbeaten current champion. In fact, both of these guys are champions right now. An unbeaten current champion in his weight class, right? 147 is a Mayweather weight class, right? Is a credible opponent. If I'm Bradley, and let's think in terms of economics, because Canelo made 10 mil fighting Floyd Mayweather. If I'm Bradley, I'd get paid to not fight, right? Why fool around getting two to five million dollars fighting, you know, opponents who aren't going to enhance your legacy? When you can just stay on the sidelines and say, look, Floyd, when you're ready, just cut me the same check you cut Canelo. Right? I believe that Floyd is also focused on legacy. And I believe Floyd wants to fight the very best. Right? It's very hard to argue that Timothy Bradley's not on that list when he's beaten Pacquiao and he's beaten Marquez. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.